I have accumulated a playtime of a total 1460 hours in Planet Zoo and I'm actually still enjoying playing the game. I have uploaded over 18 pages of blueprints and massed over 1,570 followers on the Steam Workshop page. In this time of me playing Planet Zoo, I've also started a YouTube channel based on Planet Zoo, massing over 11,000 subscribers and accumulated over 1.7 million views where people of the internet have watched me create all kinds of stuff in Planet Zoo. From large modern but realistic African habitats for rhinos, to possibly the world's smallest habitat ever created in Planet Zoo. You name it, I've probably built it and a lot of people have watched me do so. So in this video, I really want to delve into A, what I've actually learnt in this journey and the best tips and tricks I can give you if you're a newcomer to Planet Zoo and be the best personal advice I can give you not just playing Planet Zoo as a game but playing video games in general especially creative games like Planet Zoo the reason I'm making this video today is because there is going to be a large influx of players to Planet Zoo from console because it is being released on console so from a PC player veteran would I call myself a veteran of Planet Zoo? I suppose I could do for someone who's been there a long time and played a lot of hours into this game and also personally watched a lot of hours of other people playing this game let's get into this when i first started playing this game i immediately jumped into career mode that's why you'll see most of my career levels are three stars apart from the ones what are very annoying if you know you know unfortunately as the dlcs got released I tend to kind of move away from career mode after I found my creativity side. Time scenarios on the other hand was never for me, it's just something what I was never interested in, unfortunately. I do like a challenge but I also like to get creative more than I like a challenge. So my very first tip for any new players in Planet Zoo is honestly start with the career mode. This is the foundation, this is the tutorial, this is what is going to show you how to play the game, how to get good at the game and then you can delve into other elements of the game. After my career in fixing up zoos were done and I handed in my retirement notice, it was time for me to move on to franchise mode. Franchise mode is where you open up your very first zoo from scratch. You get to name your zoo whatever you wish and boom, you can start building the zoo of your dreams, but with limitations. For me, franchise mode was a real eye opener. Loading into the game and looking at a blank green screen like you can see here was really difficult for my head to get around but it opened up the possibility of so much ideas in my brain and that helped me tap into my creativity side. Like I said at the beginning of the video, time scenarios were just something what was never for me. Having that timed challenge just brought my anxiety and it just wasn't the relaxing game what I bought the game for. Next up, it's sandbox mode. And this is where I could really start getting creative now and pushing the boundaries of my creativity. But it was very daunting. Just like in franchise mode when you open up your very first zoo and you don't know where to start, sandbox mode was that times 100. Opening up any zoo for the first time is a very daunting experience, just like you got that same experience with your very first franchise zoo. But for me, sandbox mode is what was missing. I needed sandbox mode. I needed something to express my creativity without the limitations of realism. You can go into the settings in sandbox mode. You can change whatever you want. You can even stop the animals escaping from your habitats to be able to create some magical, wonderful stuff. This zoo project you're looking at right now is called New Tropic Zoo. It's a modern zoo based in the grasslands of Africa and I built everything in this zoo. The full series is on my YouTube channel if you do wish to watch it. And jumping into sandbox mode for the very first time really did open my eyes and I started thinking, wait a minute, can I create anything in what my brain can come out with? I'm quite a creative person as it is. It runs in the family. My mum was a painter. My dad was a sheet metal engineer. We love getting creative and I can finally express that in a video game a video game i really enjoy playing and even though this game is currently like a building simulator to me there are cute animals thrown in there as well and i do take them into the count when i build everything it's something i really enjoy doing now is building and seeing what my limitations can come up with and seeing what my brain and my creative side can come up with and then projecting that in this game 
I've spent many hours playing this game and sandbox mode is probably where I've spent the most hours recently. I love the challenger franchise mode, I love learning about the game in career mode, but sandbox mode is kind of like the end game of Planet Zoo. So make sure you leave this to the last because if you do, you really will enjoy it that way. It won't become across daunting, you won't panic and don't know what to build, you will have the capabilities to build everything you want to build by the time you get to sandbox mode if you do the career and then franchise mode first. Whether you are a lover of animals or you just like getting creative and building stuff in a virtual world, this game has a perfect mixture for those two kinds of people or if you're like me and you love animals and you love getting creative you will love this game but don't rush do not run before you can walk and be very patient with it you're not going to start off building habitats like this learn the game practice the game spend a lot of hours playing the game and this game has endless possibilities now I've given you my personal advice and my personal history of where I came from and why I started playing Planet Zoo and why I love playing Planet Zoo. Let's jump into some of kind of like the top tips I would give any new player when starting off in Planet Zoo. So hopefully you would have took the hint of doing the career mode first and now you'll know the fundamentals of the game and the controls. You might want to jump into franchise mode and that's where the challenge comes in now you have the freedom to build pretty much what you want but with the limitations of having to hear by animal welfare and making sure that your zoo doesn't run out of money or conservation credits now the best way to start off is to follow a starting layout guide which you are now watching in the background and it is the most viewed video on my channel because if you want to go and check that out the link will be in the description down below but what i'm trying to say is get the fundamentals correct make sure your pathing is correct make sure your paths are thick enough for your guests to walk through fr freely without getting stuck make sure your facilities are in the right place to maximize revenue these are the things you've got to think about you've got to have that managerial aspect in your brain to be able to think of this and the end of the day it is a managerial simulation kind of game isn't it before you get creative think about how you're going to get creative you need funds don't you you need to maximize how you're spending your funds at the beginning of the franchise mode so you can you know you can have success in it and enjoy it last thing you want to do is get into like year five of your zoo and you're failing because you've got no money left so you need to know what facilities to buy where to put them make sure you maximize stuff like where your toilets are what facilities or were maximize your what your guests are going to spend on and maximize the money what is coming in and little tips and tricks i will show you in the tutorial as well remember i'll leave it in the link in the description down below like where to put your first habitats what animals to buy and stuff like that i have got a part two as well what goes on to you know increasing the size of your zoo and where to go from then and once you've got those fundamentals correct in franchise mode it opens up the freedom then you've got enough money you'll have more than enough money to build whatever you want but with those challenged aspects still in with the animal welfare and stuff like that and once you do have the funds to start delving into the more creative aspects of the game feel free to build whatever you want now i'm going to give you a major tip when it comes to habitat and it's as simple as this you need to be using no barriers throughout the game in the career mode it will suggest to you that you use the in-game barriers i'm just going to get them up to show you now so if I go into barriers, you'll find all the barriers here with different grades and stuff like that. You need to make sure the correct grade meets the correct animal of what you're building the habitat for so it doesn't escape and, and stuff like that. And then you need to put your habitat gate in and then maintain that habitat gate. Now, the good thing about no barriers, you can see you can create your own barriers. As I've created this here and then the outside of it, I've just wrapped a no barrier all the way around the edge of my natural looking um, barriers with the bricks and the foliage and then separated it with my own custom barriers with the wood pieces out of the construction menu and here I've made like a dug down area and a little body of water and as long as you wrap a no barrier around the edge of it and you connect it to a habitat gate which you can see here this is the habitat gate i've just placed it in the wall it will still work your animals can get in and most importantly they cannot get out that's the brilliant thing about no barriers it opens up this whole creative side of this game you can pretty much build what you want and your animals will not escape you just need to remember to block it with your own creative stuff like it like custom made barriers like this and even little bits of rock and sunken down habitats will work to stop your animals escaping 
And once you have become comfortable in using these no barriers and you can create habitats exactly how you want them to look, you will probably find yourself in the position I find myself in when I thought I want to create a YouTube channel and I want to show people the stuff I can build now and know how to build it. But now you know how to create custom barriers, the possibilities are endless. You can totally customize anything that you want when it comes to barriers and your, like I've just said, your animals, water, escape, add a bit of education and open up your own sandbox zoo like I have done here. And when I knew I could do that, I thought, yeah, having a YouTube channel makes sense. Let me show my creativity side. Let me show people what I can create and hopefully it will influence people to be more creative. And then I found out I was getting a lot of questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? And I thought, hmm. Maybe I should start making tutorials of showing people how to do that. And if you are new to my channel, I've got so many tutorials in specific areas. So maybe it is no barriers you're struggling with. Maybe you do want to learn how to use the in-game barriers when it comes to water and create bodies of water like this to create underwater viewing areas. Maybe you want to create moats like this to create natural looking um, habitat barriers. Or maybe you want to create an animal overpass or like a big cat enclosure like this caracal enclosure where your guests can look up above their head and see animals traversing from one side of their habitat to the other. Or creating indoor-outdoor habitats like this nocturnal house where outside there is a habitat for the um, porcupine which leads to the inside viewing area just like that all entwined into each other. So hopefully with those tips and those little bit of guidance, your habitat creating is now going to take on to the next level and you're going to think about opening up your sandbox zoos like this and getting into sandbox mode after franchise mode. Because once you have reached your limitations in franchise mode with your creativity, you are going to want to open a sandbox mode zoo. Now I can go on for hours and hours and hours of loads of different tip, tips and tricks from like combining different coloured rocks and lowering them into the ground so they look like pebbles like you can see here. Creating water fountains what are absolutely massive like you can see here to creating backstage areas what really do look functional and that would be in a zoo in real life adding that realism aspects to even creating things that are not even functional in your zoo, but you would have in a zoo, like this splash pad play area for children. Unfortunately, the game mechanics don't allow the guests to play with it, but it looks good and it makes the zoo looks more realistic because this is what you would have in a zoo. Don't just create normal looking restaurants, create a restaurant what's floating over water, what's absolutely ultra modern with customized lanterns at the front of it and try to think about how things work in real life and what pieces, what building pieces you can use for other stuff. Now this, I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. These lanterns here, these are created out of glass pieces and wooden pieces. Let me just get rid of all these notifications. We don't care, it's in sandbox mode, remember? No, I can fix those things. But yeah, look, conservation blind slat. And these are just a mixture of building pieces. We've got little rope pieces and little handles here and the candles inside to create that lantern. Use the building pieces how they wouldn't normally be used. Try to think about if you've got one piece, if you've got wooden wooden piece like this, how am I going to use it? How can I use this one wooden piece in any other thing I want to build, what I can think about building? And believe me, you will start to find out that anything that you think you can build, you will be able to build with a little bit of patience, perseverance, and, and maybe a lot of bit of practice. Okay, maybe it is a little bit of, well, a lot of practice. Then you will start diving into the world of creating custom walls like you can see here because you're fed up of the walls, what the game gives you. Custom barriers, which we've already touched on. Then combining the two to make standout staff facilities what look a bit like this. And I would suggest, even though I am a YouTuber and I create videos, I honestly would suggest of watching YouTube videos. Even if they're not mine, there's loads of good creators out there creating some wonderful stuff. And by watching them create stuff, you will learn how to create the stuff that they're creating. That was like a mouth tongue twister but yeah that's what i'm trying to say if you're watching speed build videos you're going to watch how people build stuff you're going to think oh how they put that glass pane in there like that oh it's not the in-game habitat class that's separate glass pieces and stuff like that you will learn where they put the education where's the viewing points oh i could do that in my habitats in my zoo and this is where you learn from videos 
Before I started making my own videos, I used to watch so many video content creators on YouTube doing Planet Zoo videos, and I learned a lot. A big one for me for Paul Paulsley. I don't know if, if you lot will remember Paulsley, but Paulsley was a really good Planet Zoo player and a good content creator. And I used to watch a lot of his videos, and I actually got to know him quite well when I first started my journey in creating videos on YouTube. And we actually became quite good friends and talked quite a lot. He stopped making videos, unfortunately. Now, I hope he, him, him and his family is doing good. And, you know, he stopped making the videos for his own personal reasons. I'm not planning on stopping it anytime soon. I absolutely love doing this and love sharing ideas and, and builds with you guys. And that pretty much concludes this video. But I do want to say I do realise I've not gave some groundbreaking tips away in this video. I've not delved into too much information. I have got a lot of tutorial videos on my channel in specific areas. So go and check them out. Whatever you're struggling with or you want to build. I've probably covered it. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on me and my Planet Zoo journey and kind of shed light on some situations and kind of shed light on people who are coming into this game now onto console. And hopefully you new players, if you're watching this, I've inspired you to build and inspired you to do things the right way, you know, by playing the career mode and then going into franchise and then sandbox mod. I will always suggest that. Obviously, you don't have to do that. You can just... just go into sandbox mode and start building but you will struggle when you don't even know the controls or the fundamentals of the game so yeah i just kind of give you a little back background on me um give you a little background of my planet zoo knowledge and and my journey with planet zoo and yeah if you are a long-term subscriber then thank you very much and if you are a new player and a new watcher then please hit that subscribe button for planet zoo content my name's adam i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will catch you in the next planet zoo video